All right, in the last section, we introduced the concept of higher order derivatives, one of which is the second derivative. And if you recall, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative, okay? So um, now the first derivative, if you remember, tells us about the slope of the function, right? So if the first derivative is positive, right, the slope is positive of the function, and that means that the function is increasing at that point. And if the and if the first derivative is negative, right, it tells that tells us that the slope is negative, and so the function is decreasing um, at that point. Now, um, so now we're going to look at what does the second derivative tell us, right? It's telling about the uh, telling us about the change in the change. Okay. So, but first of all, I want to talk about concavity. Concavity has to do with the curvature of a function. So, again. Remember that a line, right? A line doesn't have any curve to it. A line is um, just, a, you know, just straight and the average rate of change is the slope. And so the slope is constant. The slope is constant at any point of a line, right? Um, but if it's not a line, if the function is not a line, then it has some sort of curvature to it. Um, and if, if the, if the uh, function has a has a shape sort of like a u right it bends upward we say that it's concave up we say that the function is concave up right and you can remember that because it looks like a u u for up right so if the function is bending upward then it's concave up okay if it doesn't bend up upward then it bends downward right here is bending downward and um, so we can, we call that concave down. All right, so that's just a definition of what co what concavity means, right? So now let's take a look at this first example. We have a, a function. It's just a polynomial function, a quadratic. And um, the first thing we're asked to do is find the derivative here. Let's find the f f prime of x. So this is just a polynomial, so with just a bunch of power functions. So we're going to have um, 2x, right? A derivative of x squared is 2x. A derivative of negative 4x is minus 4. And then the derivative of the constant is 3. OK? So um, what we want to do is sketch the function and investigate the concavity of this function. But we're also going to finish this table here, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I've got some values for x at this table. I'm just going to plug those values for x into f of x and see what I get. So, so I've written down the, the numbers I got when I plugged the values into the function. And um, and then I plotted those points and then connected them up with a line, right? And you can see, you can see that this um, concavity that matches what we said was concave up, concave up, right? So now that there's another column here, so I'm going to fill that out as well. I'm just going to plug uh, these x values in um, into the derivative function and um, fill out the table. All right, so I put in the values for the derivative. Now you can see that the derivative is a line, right? It's a line um, and has a slope, uh, right? It has a slope of 2. And you can see these values are increasing. As x, can, as x increases, um, the value of the derivative increases, all right? So let me scroll down just a hair so we can answer some more of these questions. Um, it says, is the f of x concave up? or concave down. Well, we already really answered that. It's concave up, right? It has that shape like a U. And f prime of x is increasing. f prime of x is increasing. Okay, so let's circle that increasing. All right, now let's find the second derivative. The second derivative, I'm taking the derivative of the derivative. So the derivative of 2x is 2, the derivative of negative 4 is 0. So the second derivative is just 2. Notice it's a positive number. So um, what that's telling us is that the derivative is increasing, right? Because it's a derivative of the derivative. All right. So what does the second derivative tell us about f of x? All right. So um, in general, if, if f 
double prime of x is greater than zero, right? Then, then the then f prime is increasing, right? Then f prime is increasing. All right, down here, increasing. And so f is, right, I'm going to use an abbreviation here, concave up. I use that quite a bit because it's a lot to write out, concave up. So a lot of times I'll put cc with an arrow, concave up. This means concave up. Okay, I'll write it at once, concave up. Okay, so f is a, a concave up. So what the second derivative is telling us is that is, is telling us about the concavity. Now in this case, it doesn't matter what x is. The um, second derivative is always positive. It's always positive, meaning that the, the um, first derivative is increasing, right? If you look here at the at this graph, if you look at the slope of a tangent line anywhere um, over on this side of the graph, right? If you look at if you were to draw a tangent line. It's not a very good tangent line, but my line isn't, I mean, my, my curve isn't very straight. But the tangent lines are all going to be, um, you know, downward. The slope is going to be negative, right? So the, um, so it's decreasing, right? And then you can see down here at this point, it stops, those tangent lines stop decreasing. And we have um, a case here where f prime is equal to zero, right? Here, over here, f prime is negative. And then um, over here, right now on this side of the curve, any any point you pick that's great for when x is greater than two, you're going to have a derivative that, um, oops, I went to it. Uh, this is greater than zero. I don't know why I wrote. Um, and I'm gonna get the eraser here. There. Um, let me go back to the pen. I meant to write zero here. <laughs> negative, right? It's negative. The derivative is negative, and it goes positive, and then it goes to positive, right? And so the the um, the 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 I, I want to say the um, the derivative is always increasing, and when the derivative is always in, is it when the derivative is increasing, then the curve is concave up, and that's the main takeaway here. When the second derivative is positive then the original function f is concave up. All right, I'll meet you in the next, well, no, actually, let's go, let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. The so next, next one is very similar, okay? So we might as well go ahead and do b at the same time here. It's just another quadratic, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the derivative, so derivative of one is zero, then I have four minus two x, that's my derivative. And now I'm just gonna fill out this table. So I just went ahead and filled out the table of values for g of x and the values for the derivative, g prime of x, and then I uh, plotted g of x, right? This is g of x, right? Just plotted the values of g of x. You can see now that it has a shape that's definitely concave down. All right, so let's go ahead and answer those same questions down here. Um, g of x is concave down and g prime of x is what? Let's look at it. It goes 6, 4, 2, 0. It's definitely going down. It's decreasing, right? So g prime of x is decreasing. And that's what gives us that, that shape, right? Because you can see we're going, if we pick a point over here on this side of the uh, side of the curve, we put, draw a tangent line, um, then it's it's going to have a positive slope, right? We have a we have a point up here where f prime is equal to zero, and then over on this half of the graph, if we draw a tangent line anywhere, then we have f prime is negative, right? F prime is greater than zero over here, okay? And um, it's the fact that the, the that the derivative, the slopes are decreasing, that give it that give g of x that concave down shape. And um, because the derivative is decreasing, then the derivative of the derivative has to be negative. So let's come back up here. Uh, let's take a look and make sure you can see my the, the function here. Um, g prime was 
4 minus 2x. So if we take the derivative of the derivative, we're going to end up with a negative 2. Okay, so you can see this function has um, a second derivative that's negative everywhere. doesn't matter what x is. Um, it has a constant um, negative second derivative. All right, so in this case, what does um, the second derivative tell us about g of x? All right, so I'm going to write a similar statement to what I had before. If the second derivative is less than zero, so negative, right? Um, then g prime is decreasing. Okay, g prime is decreasing. So g, the original function, is concave down. Again, I'm using a little uh, abbreviation. This just means concave down. All right. So that's the main takeaway from this. If the second derivative is positive, the function is concave up up at that point, right? And if it's and if the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. Now you can have you can have functions that have both concavities, right? If I were to draw a function um, you know, I could have a function that looks like this. It's concave up or sorry, concave down, I mean, it's concave down, and then it could switch to concave up, right? So you can have a function that has both. Um, so, um, you know, in that case, the um, now it, instead of having a constant um, second derivative, it's going to have a tr second derivative, the derivative that depends on x, right? So, um, but key, key take takeaway is that the second derivative tells us about the concavity of the function.